terpenes are really cool molecules largely derived from plants. I've shown a few here, for example, the oil of lemon, peppermint, ginger. These are structures we're actually familiar with, along with vitamin A, shown at the bottom. Now, in one case, in the, in the case of menthol or peppermint, I've shown actually the, chiro the individual enantiomer that's seen in nature. There's uh, some chiral centers that I've not labeled. For, for example, in ginger, I've left these chiral centers unlabeled and also in oil of lemon. What I want you to see is that these structures, although they're relatively complicated, there's actually a pattern, and that pattern for their construction is based on the five carbon so-called isoprene unit. So what you're going to have to be able to do is you're going to have to be able to look at these complex structures and imagine how the five carbon isoprene unit can be used to assemble them. So what I'm going to show you on the next slide are the same structures with the isoprene units highlighted in red. So you can see, for example, with the oil of lemon, we've got two new bonds that are created between two isoprene units that are used to assemble the ring structure. The same with menthol, we have the two bonds that are created here between the two units of isoprene that build up the ring structure. These are called diterpenes because they're composed of two of those five carbon isoprene units. On the other hand, if we look at the molecule that is one of the main ingredients of ginger, we notice that we have these bonds that are created but it's not between two isoprene units, it's actually three. One, two, three. That's called a triterpene. Molecules can be more complex, such as vitamin A down here, and what you see is that we have all of these bonds that are used to put together one, two, three, four isoprene units in the case of vitamin A. So even though on first pass these molecules may have looked very different, in fact they all share this common feature of having a carbon framework that is built from five carbon isoprene units. It's very important that when we show you a structure of a terpene, you're going to be able to imagine where the five carbon isoprene units are located within that molecule and that you can identify which new bonds had to be created. Now I want to take this a little bit further and talk about how they're actually constructed in biological systems, in other words, in plants. So as I've been stressing, the five carbon isoprene unit is really the basis for construction. Now it's not just a five carbon hydrocarbon that's used by Mother Nature. In fact, it's these two. The molecule on the left has a terminal double bond, the molecule on the right as an internal double bond, but you can see when we show them in cartoon form that it's really just the five carbon isoprene units with this diphosphate group on either side. That helps with solubility. It also has a lot to do with the actual biochemistry, which we're not going to get into. I just want you to look at the overall structures. Because these units are assembled usually first to create longer chains, such as farnesyl diphosphate. And if you look at farnesyl diphosphate, and we look at it in cartoon form, we can tell it's a triterpene where we've got new bonds that have been created from those five carbon units and there's actually three isoprene units that have been put together. So here's what's really cool. What happens is that inside an enzyme now, a reaction occurs and what I'm going to show you is how the ginger molecule is actually constructed. Not a detailed mechanism, but just in general. So when we take a look at the ginger structure, we notice, and I've, I've numbered all of the different carbon atoms, we notice that it's carbon 15 here that's bonded to carbon 9. So even though the ginger molecule looks like it was a very complicated construction, it's really this carbon is coming around and reacting with carbon-9. Again, this is happening 
inside of an enzyme. There's a lot of chemistry here I'm not talking to you about. But the bottom line, I wanted you to notice this actually isn't as complicated as you might have thought. The ginger molecule is really just starting from farnesyl diphosphate. We make one ring structure, and that generates the very complicated ginger, but in a fairly straightforward fashion. So I hope you can now have a new appreciation for what terpenes are all about and why I think they are really cool molecules. And in fact, many of them are used as flavorings in the kind of foods that we really like to eat.